This is the first of a series of videos demonstrating how to learn to program uh, using the basic programming language. I'm using just basic here, but you could follow the course using another type of basic, such as small basic or quick basic. The reason I'm using basic is it's a nice simple language to begin with, but it contains all of the key things that you need to uh, pick up when you're learning to program and it also helps you to move on to more sophisticated development environments and say create a program in Visual Basic or create a website using ASP or ASP.NET or even do things like create an Excel function using VBA in Office. So here's basic, it's nice and uh, simple. Uh, it's got the white area here, you type in your program so I'm going to just print hello world, that's a traditional um, first step in learning to program in any particular language. Um, and then when I want to run my program, I click on this button here. It looks like the play button you might find on a video recorder or on a DVD player. I, you can also use the keyboard, uh, shift F5 as it says on the tooltip. And when I do that, the results of my program appear in a separate window over the top. So that's it. That's all you need to do. You can also save your program um, using the file menu and load it up and run it again later on. So what we're going to have a look at first is output. Traditionally, the function of a program is to take some sort of input, either from the user or from a file of data, process it in some way, and then produce an output. So um, all programs are going to need to produce an output, otherwise there wouldn't be any point to them. Um, and so we'll have a look at that first. So as you've already noticed, probably the command or the keyword that you'd need to use to display something on the screen in BASIC is print. So print displays things uh, on the screen for the user to see. Um, notice a couple of things. First of all, we need space between the command print and what we want to print. And also, because I'm printing text here, I need to put the text in speech marks. So I'm printing hello world, and when I run that, what I get on the screen is hello world. It's exactly as I've typed it in in my program. It doesn't make any assumptions. Uh, so if it was a name, for example, it wouldn't put a capital letter in, it wouldn't put spaces in for you. Uh, it just prints it exactly as you've typed it in. So if I want capital letters, I need to put them in. So hello world with a capital letter will give me hello world with a capital letter. So that's printing text. Need to remember to put it in speech marks. We can also print a number. So if I want to print um, 7, for example, um, uh, if I wouldn't run my program, it'll print hello world and then it'll print 7. So if you've never done any programming before, the key thing to also appreciate is that the program runs from the top downwards. So it prints hello world first, then it prints hello 7. Also notice that each time you use the command print, it starts a new line. And we look at how uh, to stop it doing that if you want to in just a minute. So we can print uh, text, we can print numbers, we can print the result of a calculation. So if I say print 4 plus 2 for example, um, or 4 plus yeah, 2, um, and run that, what we get is not 4 plus 2, but the result of the calculation. So instead of printing 4 plus 2, it's printed 6. Now if you've never done any programming before, you might also be surprised to see uh, that you can actually use um, the, the plus symbol to add together words. So if I say hello plus uh, world, what it will do is it will just join the words together. So obviously it doesn't make any sense to add them in the mathematical uh, sense, but we can actually join them together. Notice again that it doesn't put any spaces in for us, so if we want a space in there we need to put it in ourselves. Okay, we can also, um, we haven't looked at variables yet, that's in a future uh, tutorial, but if you want to use a variable, so if we had a equals 1 and b equals 2, then we can print the value of a variable. So if I print a, then what I'll get is a 1 when I run my program, because a is 1, when I print a, I get the value 1. And similarly, I can perform a calculation, so I could print A plus B, and what I'll get is uh, 3, because 1 and 2 is 3. Okay, so key things to start with. If you want to print text, you need to put it in speech marks. You can print numbers 
or variables just by including their name. So what about if we want to print things on the same line? So I said at the start that each time we use the word print, it starts a new line. So if I run this program here, what we'll get is hello and world on separate lines. So hello and world like so. But we can stop it doing that. We can insert a semicolon at the end of a line. And what that says to the computer is, after you've printed this, don't start a new line. Uh, let the next print command carry on uh, on the same line. And if we run that program, what we'll see is hello world all on the same line. Notice that there's no space in there, so you do need to be careful when running things together to include any spaces that you want to include, but you can do that just by typing them. So if you click the play button now, we can see we've got hello world um, all on one line with a space in. Now that's not a particularly realistic example, so a better example would be where you uh, run together sort of text um, from elsewhere in the program, either from user input um, or from a data file, but uh, something that's been stored and might change. So I'm going to use two variables here. Again, if you don't quite follow this, um, you will do if you come back after watching the variables tutorial. So I've got two variables, one called f for forename and one called s uh, for surname. And they're um, storing uh, the word names Joe and blogs. Uh, respectively, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to print, oops, uh, I'm going to print those together on one line. So you can actually use the semicolon uh, within a line, so you can run things together on the same line. So if I run together f, so that's the full name, I can put a semicolon. Uh, I'll need a space in to space the two names out, and then I'll um, put in my surname s. And what that'll do is I'll run together Joe, a space, and blogs. So that's a kind of probably more realistic sort of use of the semicolon to run two things together on a single line where we don't know what they are because there wouldn't be any point in um, printing Hello World separately when we could just print them um, in one go. What we can also do is we can use that same technique to run together uh, numbers or uh, run together variables and other text. So if we said, um, we could add a bit on here, so we could say, how uh, are you? So there I've mixed variables and other text on the same line. Uh, and if we run that, what we'll see is it says, hello, uh, no it doesn't, it says Joe Blogs, how are you? Um, and if I wanted to, I could put a, a number on the end. So that wouldn't make sense in this particular context, but it just shows that you can use the semicolon to get to run together um, different types of things. So fixed text, variables, and numbers can all be joined together. So I think that's probably all the key things you need to know about the print command. So you use the command print with a space after it. If you want to print your own text, you need to enclose it in speech marks, remembering any capital letters or spaces that you want. And um, if you want to print a number or a calculation or a variable, then you don't need the speech marks. But you can join all three types of things together uh, using a semicolon.